Good afternoon. Uh, now it's noon <laughs> at the time of recording this. Hello, brethren, sisters, saints, Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, pillar and ground of the truth. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please read along with me in the scriptures that we will be considering today. Uh, thank you, brethren, for your patience with your servant. Um, do, please do keep in mind, please, that when there are gaps in between what some of you have gotten used to, uh, as far as, you know, what videos and whatnot, <laughs> please do keep in mind um, your servant's health. <laughs> please. Well, yeah, yesterday was not good. But anyway, that is not today. <laughs> that is not today. The sin of indifference. We're going to be starting off here in Revelation chapter 3. Now, we have addressed this topic on a few occasions, I believe. Um, and we're also going to take a, a look at one of the best examples of what we are aiming at today, uh, King Manasseh. Um, and I know that we have discussed this before. Uh, where is it, though? <laughs> where is it on the channel? I have no idea. I mean, and I'm pretty sure that the um, look at King Manasseh that we have done, it might be an old foolish king, which will be in the description box for you. It might be, but um, I don't know where a lot of the stuff is. Like the other day, a uh, brother asked me, you know, about a certain, I forget what you asked me about, brother. And I'm like, oh, yeah, the Lord gave a video on that. And, and our brother, Alexander B. Hartley, he knows. He's like, oh, well, which one? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Try the search thing. I don't know. So, but like I said, we're going to be touching on this because um, indifference. If you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. And man has free will, despite what some of these nitwit Christians would have you believe. Some of them do. You know, some of them say that man doesn't have free will. Uh, Calvinists say that, even though they say that you have free will in what was decided for you. <laughs> okay, that, no, 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 no. No, man has free will. And especially looking at this disgusting, stupid, woke thing that um, has gone on in America. Now, very quickly, the whole woke thing and woke videos the, uh, refuting that stupidity, stupidity, okay? <laughs> uh, things in the description box will be there for you on that, okay? The woke thing originally was a hemetic movement uh, where, um, which was aimed at the Hamitic people to wake up to be woke about the oppression from white man in the U.S. government or something like that. You can, you can find that out on your own time, okay? But what happened was the woke thing kind of evolved to include grotesque sexual perversion and also grotesque things about gender and whatnot. Hence, a third option. You see, dear friend, and, and now saints, this, this isn't really for you per se, but it is. You know, I've um, been talking to a few people lately, and this mentality, this option C mentality. Listen, dear friend, there's only two choices in life. Christ or yourself? And see, religion, through mystery, Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Rome, will disguise things for you, for you to make the choice to be as your father the devil instead of going to the Lord Jesus Christ. See, there is no option C. There is no option C. And those of you who want option C. 
you can, I, I bring up the woke thing because how many genders are there? Two. But what do the woke people do? Well, there's a third, there's cis, and, <laughs> and all this uh, uh, pan, you know, like the pan flute and pan the devil and stuff like that. They, they, they interject an option C, which does not exist. Which does not exist. The, and that comes from Rome. What's their op the, Purgatory. Purgatory. Okay? Revelation 3, 14 on to verse 18. And on to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. In the beginning was the Word. <laughs> and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. <laughs> and God said, Genesis 1 verse 3. Okay? The third aspect of the Godhead. Okay? Not three persons that make one. Oh, excuse me. You never know. You never know. Excuse me. Pick apart. Pick apart. Yeah. You know, you never know. I start talking about I start talking about that pond scum antinomianist doctrine or Catholicism or whatnot. I, I seem to get a little, you know, Flemish. <laughs> but the beginning of the creation of God. God spoke everything into existence. God said the capital W word made flesh. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God our Father. Okay? I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. Either or. Either or. There's only two options. Christ or the devil, i.e. you being as your father, the devil lost person. There is no option C, <laughs> okay? D, or there's no option one, two, three, four, five, six. No, no, no. There's only two. There's only two. The Lord or yourself. And when you choose yourself, you are acting as your father, the devil. Okay? The Lord, and see, let me, let me put it to you this way. For example, the, the sweetheart <coughs> Canadian talk show host. Okay? I know where he stands. He's a lost devil. Okay? He knows where I stand. I stand for the Lord Jesus Christ who is. Okay? We're enemies. Okay? We are. But! We both know on which side we stand. Okay? There's no confusion in that. Okay? Atheists! There's no such thing, by the way. You, you claim not to believe in a God or a deity. You lie and your breath stink. And I can smell it all the way over here in Woodstock, Illinois, through the computer. Okay? And it stink. Okay? There is no such thing as an atheist. Okay? They're, they, they, you don't exist, dude. You think you do. <laughs> no such thing. Okay? No such thing as an atheist. Okay? <laughs> you, you don't exist. The deity that you believe in is yourself. Okay? But see, when you encounter an atheist who is warped in that mentality, you at least know where they stand. If you choose not to decide, you have already made a choice. Okay? All right? So with atheists, you know, for example, uh, the one uh, crazy guy, uh, Dave Murphy. Okay? I, I know where he stands. He's a devil. Okay, he and I, I would be enemies, obviously. Okay, obviously. We know where he stands. He knows where I stand. Same with the Canadian talk show host. I know where he stands. He knows where I stand. There's no confusion there. Okay? That is easier to deal with. Okay? That is easier. It's when you encounter these people. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, 
I will spew thee out of my mouth. Ah, lukewarm, indifferent. Option C. Makes the Lord sick. Spew thee out of my mouth. Vomit. See, one dude, he's, he's already chosen his side. He's working for the Vatican. He's, he's of the devil. I know that. That's easier to deal with. He knows that I am saved. And my father is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Okay? Easier for him to deal with. Okay? Dave Murphy, he lost devil. Him and the one dude that could be brothers. Okay? I know where he stands. Made a plane. He knows where I stand. See? A soldier has the advantage of being able to look the enemy in the eye, proverbially, okay? <laughs> All right? It's when these people, just like that, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. Pick a side, dude. And here's the irony of it all. Here's the irony of it all, okay? Like Neil Port wrote and Getty Lee said, if you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. And when you choose to be indifferent, you make God sick. Now, Grant, now the, the devil guys, you know, who serve the Vatican and Satan, they're, they're, they're lost, they're going to hell, okay? But they can be identified. You know, there's no wishy-washy in that that in that actual capacity, there's no, ugh, there's no gray, okay? There's no gray. And there is no gray, even though, see, I think it's very appropriate that I am wearing this color today. There is no gray. Because what happens? What happens when you mix white and black? Gray, right? The best of both worlds. Hmm. And as we are going to see, indifference comes about by leaven, which produces sin, and the ultimate consequence of that will be punishment. Because indifference, option C, dear friend, your gray area that you want so badly is sin. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. You make the Lord sick. You're trying to be indifferent. You're trying to be uh, uh, luke. You want to be lukewarm. You make God sick. I have heard, uh, you know, online. Okay, I've never encountered it because you know when I get to talk to people, they 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 know where I stand. Okay, that's the thing. You know where I stand. All right. There's no gray area there. All right. But see, I've seen people online and heard people talk about it. It's like when some Christians, it's like, aren't you supposed to be a Christian, right? Aren't you supposed to be at least standing up for what your God tells you to, right? But yet you're being like me. You, you're being wishy-washy, you know, cold, lukewarm. You know, lots of people have seen that. And a lot of Christianity, like the Unitarian movement, Okay, Unitarians, they implement that. And also, in a way, so does antinomianism. Okay? Interde and it all stems from 11 of, Yea hath God said. Yea hath God said. Satan questioning what God has said. Okay? And see, with Yea hath God said, that's leaven. That's leaven. Verse 17, oh, verse 16. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing. Why do I need your God? Life's good. You know, I'm, things are going fine for me. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. Oh, have you ever encountered this one? It's like, what are you talking about, man? I got more money than you do. Oh, good for you. I'm sure you do. Okay? Good for you. 
Okay? It's like, look at me. I mean, I got nice clothes. I got all this stuff going on. And you're saying that I'm wretched? This is the eternal perspective again, which is, <laughs> with every pun intended, lost to the world. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in fire, purified seven times, <laughs> that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Here's what you need, the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay, this, he, uh, the Lord will use this to get you to Him. Okay, indifference. See, the Laodicean church, the body, was indifferent. Indifferent. Either or. Doesn't matter. <laughs> you can have your cake and eat it too. And see. This woke thing here in America. Now, the woke thing is prevalent in other nations uh, like Canada. It's really rife in Canada. Um, uh, uh, some of it is in England. But that, that's, <laughs> that's made in America. <laughs> there you go. That's here in America. Uh, it, that, that is a poison that has spread out uh, amongst the world. Yes, it's also pretty prevalent, as I remember, in Australia as well. Okay. But... See, that mentality has succeeded here in America, especially in doing what it was meant to do, to divide and also to interject gray. And it has succeeded. It will be <laughs> that, you know, that's, you know, especially during the time of Jacob's trouble, that, that this whole thing is going to be abolished, of course, but... Until then, it has accomplished what it was meant to do. To divide people, to interject a third option. Well, how many genders are there? There's only two. See, right there, that's an allegory of the reality of eternity. You're either saved or you're lost. Okay? Buddha is not the way. Muhammad is not the way. Okay, all your Hindu gods that you have is not the way, okay? Rome definitely isn't the way, and that's the mother of harlots. She is responsible, Satan is responsible for the fluff, for the yea hath God said. Scripture proves that, okay? But see, what I want you to remember is, for those of you, I want option C. You have to remember, there is no option C. If you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. And when you choose not to decide and still make a choice, you are choosing off of what criteria, something that you come up with. Hence, you are your own standard, you are your own God, See how that works? You see how that works? You are as your father the devil who said, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. See, indifference is just a very cleverly disguised method, way of ye shall be as gods. And all the while, like our Lord says here, <laughs> So then, because thou art lukewarm. Now, see, consider. The Lord says, because thou art lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, God vomits, makes him sick. But ultimately, what does that mean? They've chosen to themselves, of themselves, and by themselves, that they are of themselves their own God. Isaiah 57. Isaiah 57. 
verses 1 on to verse 12. Isaiah 57, verses 1 on to verse 12. Now, verses 1 and 2 is it about the redemption of the purchased possession directly? No, I don't think so, but it, it sure does sound good, doesn't it? It sure does. Can you directly tie, directly tie Isaiah 57 verses 1 and, and 2 into the redemption of the purchased possession? No. But there is a kind of conjoining there. Regardless. Let's read. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. And merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. The evil to come is the time of Jacob's trouble. And the righteous, those saints, we are being taken out of the way before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. Okay? But draw nigh hither, ye sons of the sorceress, by thy sorceries. Hmm. The seed of the adulterer and the whore. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Oh, you could tie into that. Proverbs 7, uh, Revelation 17 right there. Oh, yeah. Adulterer. Uh, what is that? Adulterer and the whore. The seed of the adulterer and the whore. You know, Satan is a created being. He wanted to be his own God. He wants to be God. He betrayed his creator. And he created his own church, his own system, the Babylonian, Egyptian, Roman Catholic system. Okay? That's created by Satan. All right? And the whore? Rome. This is our instruction in righteousness, by the way. Against whom do ye sport yourselves? Against whom make ye a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? Are ye not children of transgression, a seed of falsehood? Yes, you are. See, there's no option C. You're either or. Okay? And if you choose not to decide, what is your criteria for choosing that? You. You. Inflaming yourselves with idols under every green tree. <laughs> shh, shh. <laughs> We're not going to go there. Not yet. <laughs> okay? <laughs> oh, well, no, you can't use that as an example for instruction in righteousness. I'll blow it out your nose, pal. Count your pennies and cars. Okay? Slaying the children in the valleys under the cliffs of the rocks, among the smooth stones of the stream is thy portion. Smooth stones, withered, uh, made smooth by water constantly running over it. Yeah, smooth. Speak unto us smooth things, puff side seats. Mm. They, they are thy lot. Even to them hast thou poured a drink offering. Thou hast offered a meat offering. Should I receive comfort in these? Upon a lofty and high mountain hast thou set thy bed. And what does, what the, what's in the heart of Lucifer, son of the morning, you know, Satan? Hmm? What's in his heart in that? Isaiah 14, verses 13 and 14. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Look at that in verse 13. I will sit also upon the mount 
of the congregation, the mountain, mount. Okay? Upon a lofty and high mountain hast thou set thy bed. Even thither wentest thou up to offer sacrifice. Behind the doors also and the posts hast thou set up thy remembrance. That's an interesting thing because how many people can put on the facade of being these righteous Christians, but when it's the four walls, ceiling, and floor out, that's the measure. That's the measure. And that sooner or later comes out in no matter who you are. Who you truly are, when it's the walls, the ceiling, and floor, you can't always hide. You can't hide forever. That will come out one way or another. For thou hast discovered thyself to another than me, and art gone up. Thou hast enlarged thy bed, and made thee a covenant with them. Thou lovest their bed where thou sawest it. And thou winnest to the king with ointment, and didst increase thy perfumes, and didst send thy messengers far off, and didst debase thyself even on to hell. So see, they wanted their cake and eat it too. They wanted the things of the Lord, but they also wanted to keep the things of the world. Just like the leaven of antinomianism offers you. Okay? And what is the consequence of this? Thou art wearied in the greatness of thy way. But I'm neither. I'm neutral. No, you're not. No, you're not. Okay? Neutrality in the eternal perspective, dear friend, does not exist. You can be neutral in a circumstance. Sure. Sure you can. You know? For example, you go to a restaurant or an ice cream place. Okay? You have many flavors. But see, eternity is not, is not multiple choice. Okay? See, this is what we're addressing. The eternal perspective. Which you Christians, a majority of you, if not all of you, with every pun intended, have lost. And see, that perspective blurred, yea, hath God said, let me introduce a little gray. What happens? Thou art wearied in the greatness of thy way. Yet sinnest thou not, look at this, there is no hope. Thou hast found the life of thine hand. Therefore thou wast not grieved. Ah. A great verse there, brother, for brokenness. Someone can be wearied in the greatness of their way. Wearied by what they have done. But yet, saidest thou not, there is no hope. <laughs> well, and now, now, be confused. Jesus Christ is our hope, the saints. But see, in order for the Lord to save you, you have to come to hopelessness, i.e. being broken. And when someone is wearied in the greatness of their way, suffering the consequences of a life of choosing themselves. And then here comes antinomianism. Here comes one of the daughters of the Hua to give you a false hope. To evade, yet saidest thou not, there is no hope. Again, the sinking submarine. I'm going to put that in the description box. Sinking submarine. Yes. <laughs> See, in order to be truly saved of our Lord Jesus Christ, you have to become hopeless. Why? Look at this verse. Yet saidest thou not, there is no hope. Thou hast found the life, thou hast found the life of thy hand. Therefore thou wast not grieved. Oh, Oh, you antinomianist pond scum. Free grace, they call themselves nowadays. 
Just believe and receive. No brokenness, no contrition, no fear of the Lord. You don't have to say anything because, see, that is the result of being broken, of being contrite, and having the hell scared out of you, which they don't know. And C, offering an option C. Hmm? Outrightly. There's no brokenness, but yet to those who are deceived, hey, just believe and receive. What is that? That's gray. It's a veiled grayness. It's veiled lukewarmness. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? And therefore thou wast not grieved. You have to be broken before you can be fixed. That's why that, that one imbecile who was uh, preaching Rene Roland to that poor guy, Nick, who's, I'm sure, not, I hope, I hope he gets saved. But uh, that's why I was really harsh on that. Because someone that's going down that process of being broken. Being broken is a process. The water comes up slowly as you're on a submarine that sinks. Or rapidly, okay? But it's, it progresses until you are uh, succumb and drowned in the water. Okay? Salvation itself, no, but of being broken led on to salvation. That's the process. Salvation itself is not a process. No, no it isn't. But being broken thereof, yourself, onto it, that's where it is. And see, that's where people like the antinomianists, Catholics and whatnot, uh, whatnot and stuff, Deceive people and blur that line and come out with a lordship salvation, which I'm going to address in another video. <laughs> lordship salvation. At least some of you idiots out there are finally realizing, huh, that's a pretty stupid phrase, the lordship salvation. That's really stupid. They're, they now call it, oh, what is it, conditional security. Okay, whatever. But that's good. You know, get away from lordship because when you look in that in the scripture, it's like, uh, dude. Anyway, anyway. Let's continue. And of whom hast thou been afraid or feared? That thou hast lied and hast not remembered me, nor laid it to thy heart. Have not I held my peace even of old, and thou fearest me not? I will declare thy righteousness and thy works, for they shall not profit thee. In Deuteronomy chapter 13, Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 6 on to verse 11. The introduction of Yea hath God said, hence 11. See, worshiping of Satan is boiled down to simply, ye shall be as gods. Okay? Worshiping yourself. I'm not bowing down. You don't, okay, what, is the, what does it mean to actually worship? Okay, that will be in the description box for you. Okay, what does it mean to actually worship something? Right away you think like, oh, I'm going to hum and on your knees and whatnot and bow it down. Yes, that is part of it. But what that is the outward stem of what comes from within. Remember, idolatry is always the extension of, of the true idol yourself. Okay? Stravia. I don't like cold coffee. Okay? So, other gods, if, see, if these guys come around and say, hey, worship Satan, uh, that's, you know, like, duh. Okay? But, Veil it in another, veil it in a religiosity. Veil it in something that seems ethical and moral, even. Ooh. Deuteronomy 13, verses 6 on to 11. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, Entice thee secretly, saying, 
Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers. There is only one God who is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Satan is not a God. He is a created being. Okay? He is a created being. All right? There is only one God. And he is not, he is not three persons. That's ridiculous. He is one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body, just like you and I are. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body, okay? So, think about this, all right? They knew, they were aware, especially here in, in the Torah in those times, they knew of who the adversary was, okay? Come on, come on, all right? So how does he disguise it? By giving you many options, okay? Namely, of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shalt thine eye pity him, neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal him, but thou shalt surely kill him, Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards the hands of all the people. Now, this was in a dispensation under, called the law, under the law, which was faith and works. The blood of Jesus Christ was not shed on the cross yet. Eternal security was not there, and they were not looking forward to the cross during this dispensation. They didn't know about the cross until it actually happened. Comprende? All right? So... And this is how God deals with nations, all right? Vengeance is the Lord's. He will repay. Why aren't we doing this today? Because vengeance belongs on to the Lord, okay? But for us, okay, to instruct us in righteousness, okay, when someone comes around preaching to you another gospel, another Jesus, excuse me, like Rome does, okay, like Rome does and all her daughters, all right? For us, Mark 9, Mark 9, verses 43 under verse 48. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. So, uh, your, so what does that say in Deuteronomy 13? Your brother, your son, your mother, or excuse me, thy brother, thy mother, your son, daughter, your wife, or your friend. Huh? Hey, let's serve other gods. Entice thee. Now, most people don't come around it's like, hey, let's serve other gods. But what do they do? They offer you option B, or excuse me, option C, right? You know, there is another way. There's always another way. There's always another way to skin a cat. <laughs> okay? But that's what they do. See, it's simple. It's either or. You're either saved or lost. You're either for the Christ who is, Jesus Christ who is God our Father, or you're of the devil yourself. That's it. It's only two. There's only two genders. Okay? It's only two. Okay? All right? Yeah, as God said. Let's serve other gods. Here's, here's option C for you. Okay? So, and it says here, But thou shalt surely kill him, thine hand shall be first upon him to put him in de to death, and afterward the hand of all the people. Hmm. So we're not literally killing heretics today. No, we don't do that. The Lord is the one who will take vengeance on that. We, but when it comes to us being presented with this stuff, okay, we are to put it away. Uh, again, to the Manian cult over there, when they cut people off, they cut people off. you got to hand it to them for that. Okay, but the same with us saints. Okay, when there is something absolutely false, heretical, you don't entertain it. You don't go on live streams with them and have fellowship with someone. Okay, like that. You don't do that. 
Okay? You put it away. You cut it off. Okay? Back in Mark 9. Okay? And the hand. What is your hand touching? Okay? 45 in Mark 9. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. Are you rushing to go be with people who are of a like mind in that you are your own God? Hmm? Are you rushing to go see it? Hmm? Why not? Put your hands on it. Where are your feet taking you? And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And if thine eye, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave unto me. I wish there were things that I could unsee. There are certain things that you, once you see them, you cannot unsee them. It cleaves to you. Like dung on the bottom of your sandal, you know. It cleaves to you. But see, again, our Lord isn't talking about literal. And some will take this when it comes into the mark of the beast, that it gets into your hand, will cut it off. And then, no, once you take the mark of the beast, you're done for. Okay? But our Lord is not telling you to literally go and mutilate yourself. See, those who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And evil men and seducers will shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Okay? And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Dear friend, hell exists. <laughs> it's real. And it's eternal. Once you go to hell, you're not leaving. Okay? Your eternity, once you're in hell, is eternal damnation, eternal burning. Some of you get cute. It's like, well, the lake of fire. Hello, McFly, genius. Lake of fire, eternal burning. You're, you're not getting away from that. No matter how cute Andy can sound, or these universalists can sound, or these stupid soul annihilationists sound, you just go up, no, 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 no. 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 If there is eternal reward, there is also eternal damnation. See, only two options. Okay, and hell is not a refining process. Once you're there, you're done. Okay? But see, again, now you go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. This putting away. Put away from you. Okay? That's what this is talking about. Okay? All right? Now, under the law, right there in Deuteronomy 13, verse 9, but thou shalt surely kill him. Yes, that was literal. Under the law, where eternal security was not there, the permanent indwelling of the Holy Ghost was not there, the blood of Jesus Christ was not shed on the cross yet. And they were not looking forward to it. They didn't know about it. Okay? Totally different dispensation. you got to rightly divide the word of truth. Our Lord talks about it in Mark 9 about... Uh, separating yourself from these things that defile you, else you go to an eternal hell. And Paul, in Colossians 3, verses 1 on to verse 7, If ye then be risen with Christ, if you are saved, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. And that's what Christianity does. That's what antinomianism does. That's what Catholicism. Well, that's just the daughter of the whore anyway. That's what all these religions do. Have your affection set on things of the earth. Okay? Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. See, Paul is addressing the eternal mindset. Dude! I know we got to deal with this stuff today. But what is our life? It is but a vapor. 
We're here today and gone tomorrow. You're going to be in whatever place you're going to be in for eternity for a long time. But see, ye yeah, have God said, gray, gray, don't feed, gray, um, hide the eternal perspective. And, only, and see, if you choose not to decide, you have still have made a choice. Your affection is on what? You. We are earthly. Our bodies were made out of the earth, they're genius. Okay? For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ and God. See, now, if you're not a saint, a saved person, this doesn't apply to you. Okay? But we are reading this because we're not supposed to be mingled with the world. We are in the world. We are not of the world. Christianity has well proven itself to be of the world. Okay? When Christ, who is our life, Christ is our life. Saints, saved people, Christ is our life. He is our hope. He is our strength. He is the power and wisdom of God. Okay? When Christ, who is our life, shall appear. Come on, brother! Whoa! <laughs> okay? Then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Verse 5. Mortify. Morte. Kill. If thy hand offend thee, cut it off. If thy foot offend thee, cut it off. If thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. He's not talking literal. Okay? If what you are touching is causing you to err from the faith, or what you are touching is keeping you from the faith, where you're walking, where the path you have chosen, uh, if it's leading you away from the faith or leading you totally contrary in the other way. If what you are looking at, you get my point. Mortify. Now, I for a while, you was just leaving it at put down. And when you put like, when I killed my cat Fritz, we say euphemistically, I put him down. What did I do? I killed him. I didn't kill him. The vet did. Okay? Simple, honest, direct. Kill. Mortify. Well, that means put down. Okay? Jargon again. When you put down your pet. And I, I get it. When you, you got your little rugrats, you know. And by the way, praise the Lord, brother, that, uh, that, ha uh, that, that, opportunity came up with you you know who you are praise the lord for that um i i was not doing well yesterday <laughs> or else i would have gotten in on that okay you those of you you know who what i'm talking about okay yeah it was not a good day yesterday anyway mortify kill now again with the thing with the pet i i know with the little rug rat it's like oh we're gonna go put him down Killing the pet. Kill. Put down. Kill. Okay? Kill it. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Which lead to, if you don't, fornication. Uncleanness. Inordinate affection. Having affection for the what? The things of the earth. Yeah, having affection. For that which you get out of one of these, see. Okay, yeah. On your health. Oh, it's easy to do. It's easy to do. You know, I took the weekend and it was like, uh, <laughs> you know, Lord, I got I to gotta get away from that stuff for a little while. And the Lord's like, yeah, you do. <laughs> you know, get away from it. Okay? But see, mortify, therefore, your members. Hands, feet, eyes which are upon the earth. We're here now. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And 
every single one of those mentioned are all forms of what? Idolatry. The idol is always the extension of the true idol. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. See, this, this needs to be addressed because Christianity glazes it all over and people are not dealing with this aspect. And when you don't deal with this, hey, just believe and receive. You become twofold more child of hell than the one who told you. And it gets progressively worse. See, I, yeah, I guess Christianity is progressive. It's getting progressively worse. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Now, there are those out there who want to say that children of disobedience are saints that just disobey and get messed up. No, 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 no. See, you hear the truth and you reject it. Or you don't want to decide. You've still made a choice. There's only two options for you. The Lord or you. And when you choose you, you are of your father the devil. There is no option C, dear friend. There are only two options. As is there are only two. See, and the whole woke thing is a perfect allegory of what and Satan is just basically laughing at you people you know there are only two options heaven or hell okay that's it as there is only two genders that's it hey hath God said hey go to purgatory burn that up for a little while and then you get to heaven or hey I'm not a male or female did you just assume my gender that's offensive that's offensive that's offensive Shut up. <laughs> it's like a record. That's offensive. That's offensive. You're offensive. Okay? You're offensive. <laughs> for which things sake, and number one, and also too, you keep reading here. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. That's saints who are messed up. And the which... Ye also walked some time when ye lived in them, when you were lost. Our dear brother Alexander B. Hartley, one of the many gems that our father gave him. One of the best videos that man has ever been given of the Lord. And it's a short and to the point, gets right at you, will be in the description box. I don't live there. I don't live there. See, you choose not to decide, you have made a choice. Where you're living where? What is your standard? Okay. Now, let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 13. Continue on. Okay, have we, have we got that one clear for you? Good. All right. Verse, 11, uh, verse 10 in Deuteronomy 13. And thou shalt stone him with stones that he die. Because he hath sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And all Israel shall hear and fear and shall do no more any such wickedness as this is among you. See, you interject gray. You're still detracting from the one unto whom you ought to go. And while, you know, while you're going to choose Satan, okay, that's plainly obvious. But see, Satan disguises himself in the gray. Gandalf the gray. <laughs> About the Lord of the Ring thing. I, you know, you geniuses out there can't figure that out. <laughs> Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32. Verses 15 on verse 18. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. You know, idle people, I-D-L-E, okay? 
have, that have too much time on their hands, they become keyboard warriors. They find things to get in trouble with, don't you? Hmm? Don't you? And then you gravitate to, you know, then you can gravitate to swipe, 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 swipe. Yeah. Yeah. You know, here, here, here's the scriptures. Okay. Read some of this. You won't be an idle I-D-L-E then. Especially if uh, the Lord is guiding you onto himself through it. But see, look at the map here. And free. <laughs> Home of the brave, yeah. Yeah. And with the level of prosperity, hey, hey, you know, you look in so, like in Nigeria and some of these also mid, uh, Middle Eastern countries where these people have, I mean, no access to anything, okay? Homeless people here in America, it's, it's tragic and it's, it's sad. Yes, it is. But there are options for homeless people. There are food banks. There are uh, places like pads here in Illinois where you, uh, where you can store your stuff and maybe take a shower or stuff like that, okay? But in third world, other, uh, third world, okay? But in other world countries, okay, where they don't even have those things available to them, okay? America it has been a prosperous nation. And because of a prosperity, okay, you get, you do what? And Jeshron means highly favored. Wax fat, and you kick. You're waxing fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. And what happens when you're full, huh? See, in, in, in the scriptures, says give me neither um ni give me neither poverty nor riches provide food for me that is convenient i just bradized that okay don't make me rich please don't make me poor well brad isn't that a middle ground there if you're poor that might lead you to do something just to get something by for yourself and when you're rich what happens can wax you can kick then he forsook god which made him and lightly esteemed the capital our rock of his salvation and see we are discussing the eternal perspective today okay there is an option c when it comes to carnally fleshly we are discussing the eternal perspective that christianity and the world blurs with its option c it's their gender Okay? That's what we're discussing today. They provoked him to this jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to your anger. They sacrificed unto devils. See, these things that you may think are innocent. Well, I'm, I'm choosing to stay neutral in this thing about salvation. There's no such thing. You're either or. You're either saved or you're lost. You're either with the Lord Jesus Christ who is or with the devil, son. There is no option C. And see, that is the eternal perspective. Here comes Christianity. Ah, oh, well, hey, hey. You can have your cake and eat it too. You can play both parts. No, you can't. Solomon, read his diary, Ecclesiastes. He failed at that miserably. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Oh. Now see, new gods, but there's only one God. And that's a little G, huh? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. These geniuses who come uh, through Satan come up with like the ones who, whoever came up with antinomianism. Well, that was Satan through Rome, of course, but, okay, new gods. Hmm. Of the capital rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God, capital G, that formed thee. 
Your belief on the matter of how things came to be is irrelevant. It really is. Okay? God created the heaven and earth. God made man of the dust of the earth. Okay? You might want to be an idiot, and I'm saying that with charity. Okay? You might want to be an idiot and thought that you and think that you uh, evolved from a sniveling piece of snot out of the water over millions and billions of years. <laughs> that, that there, 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 that's your ancestor, huh? <laughs> and you evolutionists call us saints crazy because we believe what God has said. Okay, ooh, evolution, i got to remember that. If we're going to slap everyone, we're going to slap them right, okay? <laughs> evolution, okay, I'm writing that down for, okay? All right, your belief on that is irrelevant. The fact is that God created the heaven and the earth. I can't prove that to you. The Lord can through his word, but see, you you got to have, kind of, you have to want that. And if you don't want truth, Unlike what Calvinists tell you, God's not going to force it on you. Okay? All right? So, of that capital of rock that begat thee, thou art mindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. Whoever you are who sees this, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, God made you. You did not evolve. <laughs> From that, that's stupid. That's stupid. Okay? You did not evolve from snot. <sniffs> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay? You have not. That's ridiculous. That's stupid. Okay? Your belief on that is irrelevant. It really is. God created the heaven and the earth. God made you. And because God made you, he has every right to be jealous when you give unto Satan what is rightfully his. We've talked about that on, in several videos, okay? Now let's continue. All right? And see, it always starts out so small. It always starts out so small, doesn't it? Yeah, a little leaven. Leaveneth the whole lump. 1 Corinthians 5. I had some stuff written down here, which we are going to avoid because it's, uh, you know, I wrote it down there. In ca you need to know this. Uh, I wrote it down there in captions if it was something the Lord wanted me to speak on, and apparently not. But 1 Corinthians 5, verses 6 on to verse 8. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump, ye have God said. Let's interject option C. A little gray. You know, there's always more than one way, right? Yeah. One, one moment, please. Excuse me. Yeah, they say there's always more, more than one way. There's always another option. When eternally, there's only two. Heaven or hell. The Lord Jesus Christ or yourself. And see, context here in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay? What was it? It was neither hot nor cold. Dude here was having, was fornicating with his father's wife, his stepmother. And the Corinthian saints were, were puffed up. It's like, hey, we're not judging you. They were being lukewarm. They were being neither hot nor cold. They were being indifferent. And they were puffed up. Look at us. Look at how pious we are because we're not judging you. This is when you need us, okay? And Paul tells them to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glorying is not good. What were they glorying in? Indifference. Gray. Either or. They were in the middle. They were not either or. They were no extreme. Okay? They were acting as if there was no absolute. And what is that thing that came from Star Wars that I've seen commented uh, several places? Only Siths 
deal in absolutes. And if you know anything about Star Wars, the Sith are the bad guys. So, and through that disgusting, stupid, ridiculous Star Wars stuff, okay, only a Sith deals in absolutes. Think about that. What are they, what is Helly Weird putting to you? That option C, indifference. The authorized version of the scriptures, the perfect inherent, given by inspiration, word of God, is absolute truth. But only a Sith, only a bad guy deals in absolutes. The woke culture here in America has done exactly what it was intended to do. And this disgust of Christianity was there before woke was, absolutely. But the two of them are like peas and carrots. Why? Because they have the same mother. Yeah. Again, I'm not a Christian, as if you haven't figured that out. Okay? Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. But see, your glory, your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Choose a side and stay on it. Like I said, talk show host, I know where he stands, he knows where I stand. We're enemies, but at least we know where we stand. Okay? Same with these idiot free gracers. Even though they try to offer you great, they're of their father the devil. I know where they stand. Don't you? But see, when you got someone trying to stay out of the eternal perspective as choosing gray or option C, your glory is not good. There's a little leaven for you. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump. Look at that verse right there. Or right, let's, let's finish it. As ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Look at the verse. Old, new. Two! Old man, Adamic, new creature, saved. Two! Only two! Okay, look at the verse. It's right there. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, not as when you were lost, okay? Neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. See, right there, dude, there's no option C. It just, it just doesn't exist. Galatians 5, but, see, Satan wants you. See, carnally, corner basket of robins. Huh? Go to your disgusting McDonald's. Okay? <laughs> Go to your refrigerator, right? Okay? Eternally. There's only two. You're either going to be get saved and be with the Lord for eternity, or you're going to hell. And Christianity and the daughters of the whore have blurred that and have mingled the eternal with the carnal in making you decide and giving you making you believe that there is an option other than the ones that are already there. Galatians 5, 1 and 9. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Bondage, a yoke of bondage. The antinomianist wants to put a yoke of bondage on you. Bondage to what? Your sin. And they give you a false peace, 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 when there is no peace, with your sin. Okay? The peace they offer you is peace with your sin. Okay? And freedom from the God who is. That's what antinomianism does. That's what the daughter of the whore does. That's what Satan offers you. Peace with sin and freedom from God. And what better way to disguise it than one of the myriad uh, options that you have on the buffet line, right? 
Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Now, we've addressed this before. Uh, most males here in America, okay? But he's talking about a willful wanting to go under the law, okay? That's what Paul is addressing there, okay? Because, hey, you're a little kid, you know, just popped out of the womb, okay, through the matrix, all right? All right, and they do the thing there. Uh, you, you have no choice in that, okay? All right, Paul is addressing when someone willfully wants to go under the law in order that they may boast themselves that they are being made right with God by what they do according to the law. See, that's what Paul is addressing there. All right? And see, also another thing that antinomianism does is say that we as saints, uh, even you, are not bound to the morality that the law instills. Okay? Very dangerous. Very, like I tell you. Uh, I, I talk about that constantly because, in my honest opinion, uh, antinomianism, free grace, is the deadliest deception there is out there today. Okay? For I testify again to everyone that is circumcised. And remember, he's talking about someone who willfully rejects to take the other. Okay? All right? Rejecting the true grace of God and replacing it with a false grace. I, for I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever you are, whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit, capital S, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? Who? Who? Ah, are you, hey brother, are you getting out of that time with Deuteronomy, huh? Huh? Who did it? Who did it? Thy brother? Thy mother? Thy son? Thy daughter? Or the wife of thy bosom or thy friend? And notice in Deuteronomy 13, verse 6. Notice what is not there in that context in verse 6. I'll go back to Deuteronomy 13, verse 6 again, by the way. Look at that context. Do you know what is not there? If thy brother... The son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers. Fathers is mentioned right there at the end. But what, do you notice what is lacking there? Fathers is mentioned right there at the end nor thy fathers. It's aimed at the male perspective. Because where the comma is as thine own soul, or, and the, or where it says, let us go and serve other gods, okay? It's given in the, to the male perspective. Thy brother, thy mother, thy son, thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, it's in the male perspective. <laughs> Which, wokeism, of course, you know, there is no, neither male nor female, right? And again, you cute Christians, like, well, there is neither uh, bond nor Greek, male nor female, that's eternally. See, we're addressing the eternal mindset. We're addressing the eternality of it, okay? In eternity, okay? In salvation, okay? There's neither male nor female, okay? But we're obviously male or female, aren't we? That's talking about salvifically. That's talking about the eternal perspective, okay? Once you're saved, you're saved. Whether you're man or woman, okay? The eternal perspective, 
Okay? Back to Galatians. Okay? Ye did well, run well. Who did hinder you? Someone close, wasn't it? That ye should not obey the truth. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. Little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. And the justification, the justification is proof positive of it. Just as if I. Sin, because we're not under the law, but under grace. Sin, because the more you sin, the more of God's grace you get. And see, what does this lead into? What does all this lukewarmness, this leaven, lead into? Oh, Isaiah 3. Isaiah 3. Isaiah 3. And as far as Christianity is concerned, um, look at antinomianists, free gracers. Perfect example. You know, outward Catholics have a form of religiosity. They're of Satan. But they have an outward form of religiosity. The antinomianist doctrine that has infected all is kind of like milk toast. Okay? The ultimate fulfillment of it is to be a Roman Catholic. Okay? But, Isaiah 3. And see, when you interject gray and you truly believe that there is eternally another option Isaiah 3 8 and 12 for Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen because their tongue because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory the shoe of their countenance doth witness against them and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Oh, listen to, you know, any of you people out there who call yourselves Christians, and you are, okay, I'm not a Christian, but you are a Christian, uh, uh, yoked up with the Vatican, who use profanity, that, come on, come on. You use profanity, come on. We slip, yes, but you guys, you're not slipping, you're doing that intentionally. Okay? They hide it not. Hey, we're free from all these things to do as we want. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Say ye to the righteous, that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him. For the reward of his hand shall be given him. Now look at verse 10 and 11. Okay? The righteous shall eat the fruit of their doings. Reward. <laughs> For the reward of his hand shall be given him. Woe unto the wicked. Reward. See, if there is an eternal heaven, there is an eternal hell. Again, the video on the eternality of hell. Okay? <laughs> it will be in the description box for you. Okay? There's no option C. It's either or. You're going to either be with the Lord or you're going to be in hell. That's it. Okay? As for my people, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. Mm. Mm. The woke thing. These teenage kids who are like, you know, you can't even talk with some of them. I do. I have, okay, it's kind of difficult because they're they, they crazy, okay? Um, common sense is not so common anymore. I was talking to, I was talking to the one dude, uh, you need to know this, and he's like, he was talking to giving me a story about how he was uh, at a place that had a grand staircase, okay? You know, grand staircase, two stairways going down to lead down onto another, okay? And at the, he saw a sign that says, uh, be careful about, you know, at the landing of the stairs that there's a, a final step of some sort. And it's like, well, yeah, duh. You know, of course, you got to watch your step because there's a step under there. And it's like, 
Well, yeah, duh, no kidding. There's one step, two step to go down there, of course. But see, think about that. Common sense is not that common anymore. And common sense through wokeism has succeeded to be blurred to where you need to be stating things so bluntly that even idiots that are deceived by wokeism can get it. Why? Because there's no common sense. A lot of the enemies of our Lord have at least common sense. Okay? They don't always exercise it, but they do. The woke thing that came here, that was started, and has fulfilled its purpose, has done what? Gray, lack of common sense. And when you talk with the fruit of wokeism, with these kids and these adults who are my age, who are supposed to know better. But what does it do? It gives you a license for sin. Huh? When you create a third option that doesn't exist in the eternal perspective, then the sky is the limit, isn't it? Why? Because you are the one that has created that third option. <laughs> okay? Think about that. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy path. Hmm. Isaiah 5, 20, and see, they declare their sin of Sodom. They hide it not. Again, the antinomianists, they boast that they can do these things, because God's grace, right? Their God's grace. Their God is Satan. Isaiah 5. Come on, saints, you know this one. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. I am superior. I'm not going to choose either of your options, but I'm going to make one of my own. It's either heaven or hell. It's male or female. Yeah, God said, oh, you got purgatory. Or what's the one? Elysium. Or hey, there is a third gender, you know. <laughs> Maybe in Looney Tunes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink. The wine that Rome offers you which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Only Siths deal in absolute, you see? Take away the righteousness of the righteousness from him. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. Saints, guess what? We deal in absolutes, don't we? The conditioning. Bad guys are the ones who deal in absolutes. And so ironic, after we, the body of Christ, be taken up, you know, before the time of Jacob's trouble, son of perdition is going to appear, and guess what? He's going to introduce absolutes. <laughs> and again, Antinomianism, especially with the these idiots that are doing it nowadays, what absolutes are there? The only absolutes that they give you is someone who is a saint uh, exposing their heresy. Those are the only absolutes they say, see, those guys, they have absolutes. They're the bad guys. Because what do they do? They backtrack because it's just believe and receive unto them. So who then really is saved? Hey, they might be messed up, but hey, if they believe, right? You see? You see the devilment there? Can you see that? Gray. Gray. And Jeremiah 8. Jeremiah 8. See, these are the fruits of yea hath God said. Indifference. And see, when you are indifferent, you are acting as your father, the devil. A saint can do that and sin, yes, but you know what happens? Uh, the Lord, 
because the saint has the Father dwelling within them. Oh boy. Oh boy. And again, the circle of sin must be stopped. And in the saint, there's only so far that can go. And if it continues on, you're in danger of dying. But Jeremiah 8, 9 and 12. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom is in them? Earthly, sensual, devilish. Comes from the earth, led up the senses, i.e. it's of the devil. Therefore will I give their wives unto others, and their fields to them that shall inherit them. For every one from the least even unto the greatest is given to covetousness. From the prophet even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely, and the Lord abhorreth the covetous. If you choose not to decide, you have still made a choice. You are coveting yourself. You, you, you. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Okay? For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace. When there is no peace. And again, antinomianness gives you peace with sin and freedom from the God who is. Hey there, little angel boy, prove me wrong. <laughs> How, when they, I see the sin that they talk about is the truth of Scripture, which they call sin. They call evil good. Okay? They're all about justifying sin. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? <laughs> it bloke. You still, you, you know, you're, you're a devil. You know, remember, suspension of disbelief. Remember, you want to deceive people, right? Uh, you should watch your mouth. But see, there again, I'm saved because I just believe. So, were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Hmm? Did they shriek in horror? It's like, oh my goodness, I just said that. Oh my God, I can't believe I looked at that. I just, eh, whatever, hey. <laughs> we're not in the law, we're on the grace. You're being in the lordship. Okay. The, the, the lordship thing we're, we'll address sometime. Oh, uh, that's so stupid. <laughs> Do a word search on lordship. You'll see what I mean. It's stupid. The way that the enemy uses it, Okay. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation they shall be cast down south the Lord. Don't even blush. Nowadays with this stuff that has been promoted, um, people hardly blush anymore. You know? See, two guys kissing. Uh, but nowadays the conditioning... They don't even blush about it, man. To women kissing, right? And you pervert guys out, lost guys out there. Ooh, yeah! Seeing a man walking around in women's clothing? That's an abomination. But, my, but Monty Python was funny, right? Or SNL, Saturday Night Live. That was funny. Ha, 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 ha. Fools make a mock at sin. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? What are we reading to? Uh, 12, yeah. Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. And also, this is also referenced in um, uh, Jeremiah 6.15. Look at Hosea. The book of Hosea. The book of Hosea. Goes Daniel... Hosea, okay? Hosea, chapter 4. Hosea, chapter 4. Verses 17 unto 18. Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. And remember, 
The idol is the extension. Ye shall be as gods. Strovia. Oh, I hate cold coffee. Their drink is sour. Yeah, because it comes from Rome. They have committed whoredom continually. Her rulers with shame do love. Give ye. And of course, that's, you know, Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. And of course, where do you go with that? Matthew 15, one verse. Matthew 15, verse 14. And see, and this is the tragic thing of it. This is the tragedy of it. Matthew 15, 14. Let's start, read verse 13 and 14. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Hosea 6, 4 and 7. O Ephraim, what shall I do unto thee? O Judah, what shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is as a morning cloud, and as the early dew it goeth away. Therefore have I hewed them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and thy judgments are as the light that goeth forth. That's why you people don't like the authorized version of the scriptures, because you can't get away with it. Okay, you can't get away from it. You can't get away with anything with, uh, through the scriptures. Okay? Got to rightly divide it, of course. But that's why they go to something else. Because the authorized version of the scriptures, this is the sword of the spirit, man. This divides the, asunder uh, marrow and bone, spirit and soul. Okay, you can't escape this because this is absolute truth. But what do they do? Only Siths deal in absolute truth, right? Or in absolutes, right? So they go to a Bible. This is the scripture. And, yeah. See, the sword's either going to prick your heart or cut your heart. You prick, you get your heart pricked. It's like, what do I do? Cut! Ah, I don't want to hear it! <laughs> and try to kill you. For I desired mercy, and not sacrifice. And the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. And yes, and I believe we covered this in Friday's video. I believe, I, I think. Okay, I can't remember. Okay. But God wants everyone to be saved. Not everybody's going to be saved. Okay. Because it's simple. There are two options. You either go to the Lord His way and He saves you. Or you go to yourself. You go and because you are your own standard, that'll lead you into one of the myriad plethora options that Satan has given you on his little smorgasbord, his little buffet line. God wants all men to be saved. But see, you have to be broken of yourself. And that's what Satan through his church and through religion, through Christianity, avoids. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. But they, like men, but they, like man does, like men, have transgressed the covenant. They have dealt treacherously against me. And let's read 16 verses now in Hosea 7. When I would have healed Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered, and the wickedness of Samaria. For they commit falsehood, and the thief cometh in, and the troop of robbers spoileth without. The thief climbs up some other way instead of going through the door, which is Jesus Christ. Anything other than that, anything other that comes from Christ, the authorized version of the scriptures, you know, Christianity, is a thief and a robber. Right? Okay? And they consider not in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness. Now their own doings have beset them about. They are before my face. Yeah, they hide it not. They don't, they, they don't blush anymore, dude. They make the king glad with their wickedness and the princes with their lies. 
Oh, because you're free to do so, huh? Yeah, all things are lawful for you, remember. They are all adulterers, as an oven heated by the baker, who ceaseth from raising after he hath kneaded the dough, until it be leavened. In the day of our king, the princes have made him sick with bottles of wine. He stretched out his hand with scorners. See, with scorners. For they have made ready their heart like an oven. Whilst they lie in wait, their baker sleepeth all the night. In the morning it burneth as a flaming fire. They are all hot as an oven, and have devoured their judges. All their kings are fallen. There is none among them that calleth unto me. Hmm. Now look at this. They devoured their judges, the ones that were supposed to be the representatives of the Lord and guide them on to the truth, but they don't want to hear that. Okay? They want to do their own thing, their option C. But look at what, look at verse 8. Ephraim hath mixed himself among the people. You got to be like the world or in, win the world, right? No. We are in the world. We are not of the world. See, Christianity, you got to be of the world. No. Ephraim hath mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake, not turned. That's very significant. Why? Because have you, have you ever made pancakes before? And you leave the one side, and the one side is doughy, and you turn it, and that one side is burnt? What does that tell us? Either or. See. You, see, you think you're being neutral. We're talking about the eternal perspective, remember. You think you're being neutral. There is no such thing. There is no such thing as neutrality in eternity. It's either or. A cake not turned. One side is burnt, the other is doughy. Either or. And if you are a cake not turned, in that context, see, you think you're being indifferent. You think you are on the fringe in the eternal perspective. Because you can be in the fringe in many things. For example, politics. I'm neither. I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. I want nothing to do with it. That's not the eternal perspective. We're talking about the eternal perspective here. Okay? Strangers have devoured his strength, and he knoweth it not. Yea, gray hairs are here and there upon him, yet he knoweth it not. And the beauty of the age is the gray head. But gray hairs here are in reference on to what? Being a cake not turned. Someone who is deceived. And the pride of Israel testifieth to his face. And they do not return to the Lord their God, nor seek him for all this. Ephraim also is like a silly dove without heart. They call to Egypt, the world. They go to Assyria, the successful enemy. When they shall go... I will spread my net upon them. I will bring them down as the fowls of the heaven. I will chastise them as their congregation hath heard. Woe unto them, for they have fled from me. Again, see, you choose not to decide. You have still made a choice. And when you do that, you are acting as your father the devil. Because what are you basing your criteria on? Woe unto them, for they have fled from me. Destruction unto them, because they have transgressed against me. Though I have redeemed them, yet they have spoken lies against me. And they have not cried unto me with their heart. When they howled upon their beds, they assemble themselves for corn and wine. And they rebel, and they rebel against me. Corn and wine. Be not fixed on the things of the earth, but the things that are of an heaven. Okay? See, they cried because of the worldly things, not because of their, oh my goodness, I've sinned against the Lord, I'm going to hell unless he saved me. Though I have bound and strengthened their arms, yet do they imagine mischiefs against me in departing from God. They return, but not to the Most High. No, what do they do? They return unto a religiosity. Are you now made perfect by the flesh? 
They are like a deceitful bow. They're pre uh, a deceitful bow. A toy that can't shoot real arrows. Their princes shall fall by the sword. For the rage of their tongue. This shall be their derision in the land of Egypt. The world which they want to be part of. Excuse me. And see. The sad. Sad part of this. Is Jeremiah 7. As Jeremiah 7. The Lord can save anybody. But again, there comes a point when, in, uh, definitely a nation, but a person will go past the point of no return. Today, God can save anybody. The impossible is possible with God. Okay? All right? Even idiots like Tom can truly be saved. Okay? But see, you are wearied in the greatness of your way. Excuse me, wearied. Hmm? An old and foolish king will no more be admonished. The longer you go, the harder it becomes. The longer you go in your own way, the harder it is to turn back to the way, the truth, and the life. See, the impossible is possible with God. But see, the probability. And God doesn't force things upon you. But see, here's the thing. God can save anybody. But in Jeremiah 7, 13 on to verse 16, we see something that ought to terrify you. And now because you have done all these works, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but ye heard not. And I called you, but ye answered not. Therefore will I do this unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein ye trust, and unto the place which I gave to you and your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. They trusted in the building, not the one who filled the building. They trusted in the building, not the one that's supposed to fill the building. You get it? I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Am I reading the right one? I think I am. Yes? Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor pray for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. And this is also echoed in Jeremiah 11, 13 on to verse 14. Now consider this. Okay, consider this. When God has... How many of you saints have been praying for something or someone and the Lord's like, okay, you need to go on from praying for that person. But Lord, what do you guys say? Like in Timothy, right? We're supposed to pray. Well, and what, let's reference that. And 1 Timothy chapter 3, I believe that is, right? 1 Timothy 3, right? Oh, no, 2. Okay? I exhort, uh, Verses 1 and 2. I exhort, therefore, that, first of all, supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority. Why? that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty as ambassadors for Christ. But when you have a system, when you have a government that is contrary to the Christ who is, see, they go to this to be, you know, always pray for someone. Uh, there comes a time when your prayers for someone are in vain. For example, me praying for Dave Murphy. Okay? Yeah, it's like, it'd be nice if he'd be saved, but it's like, you know, think about this. When the Lord puts upon you when you are praying, because only the Lord is the one who can tell you how to pray or what to pray. He is the only one. Man can't do that. Man has no right to do that. But when you're, how many of you in prayer? It's like, you know, 
you know, you're praying for the wrong thing. Or don't pray for this person anymore. He's under my judgment. When the Lord tells you not to pray for somebody, how horrible. Think about that. Think about that. Think about that. How horrible. What must what might be coming onto someone when the Lord's like, therefore pray not thou for this people. What does that mean? That they've gone past the point where they can't come back. Today, it's not that the Lord can't save them. The Lord can save anybody. But there are people out there. For example, America. You Trump people. You are stupid if you really believe that America is going to become this prosperous, great nation that it never was. You're crazy. You're crazy. And I believe, you know, remember, out of the two, the worst for the nation is who was going to be selected president for the American uh, people, okay? And I know this doesn't mean anything to you outside of America, but go with me, okay? The worst of the two was who the Jesuits were going to select and put in office. Trump's in office. Kamala Harris was an idiot. She was stupid. She obviously was scripted, okay? Uh, roll that around your head, brethren, people. Knowing the reality of the situation, that whoever is worse for the country is who the Jesuits were going to put in. Donald Trump is our president now. Not my president. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I, know, but I don't vote. <laughs> I have every right to complain. Absolutely. Amen. Mr. Carlin had that one right. But think about that. I, I And again, I, I thought for sure that the Jesuits were going to put that stupid idiot Kamala Harris into office. I really did. I thought that was the worst choice. Apparently not. And the Napoleon plan, Napoleon thing uh, about will be in the description box where we talk about, uh, you know, Trump being maybe like the Jesuits did with Napoleon Bonaparte. We address that in that video, okay? Okay? But see, when you're looking here about what Paul says, why are we giving prayers for all men that we may lead, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty? This is good and acceptable in the sight of God, who God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Okay? God wants everyone to be saved, but guess what? Not everyone's going to be saved. Okay? Not everyone's going to be saved. All right? And there are, especially a nation, America, uh, praying for America that it be right uh, is not going to happen. Okay? Declare their sin as Sodom. It's not going to happen. But see, on the individual. And then that, that leads us to 2 Kings. 2 Kings. Chapter 21. The nation of America, uh, any nation under heaven, okay? Any nation under heaven is not going to come back from the state it is in, but individually. See, after the body of Christ gets redeemed, taken up before the time of Jacob's trouble, God is going to turn his attention back to that one nation of Israel. And Israel eventually, which is written down for us, will be redeemed. Okay? As a nation. But see, today, America is not going to be redeemed. There's no way there's no way it can be. Okay? But a good picture of this is King Manasseh. King Manasseh was one of the worst kings in the history of Israel. And again, saying, I don't know if I mentioned this to you on uh, Friday's video. Uh, you are really crippling your life and your walk with the Lord if you do not at least um, page through First and Second Kings. 
First and Second Chronicles. There's so much instruction and in righteousness in there. And also you can get instructed about different types of people, persons, spirits, and body through them. Okay? King Manasseh. King Manasseh, uh, uh, 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 9. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hafziba. Okay? Now, Manasseh was 12 years old. Manasseh was the king of uh, son of King Hezekiah. King Manasseh was born in the 15 years that was given unto Hezekiah when Hezekiah wept uh, uh, towards the wall and asked God not to take him yet. So God gave him 15 years, and in that 15 years came an essay. And in that 15 years, eh. but Manasseh is the product of that 15 years. And when you look at what Manasseh was like, it gives you an idea of the, how Hezekiah, even though King Hezekiah is one of the greatest kings in the history of Israel, Hezekiah is up there waiting for us in heaven. It tells you a little something about those 15 years that Hezekiah was given, how Hezekiah behaved himself and what it was like. Why? Because you can see the fruit of it in Manasseh. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord after the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. For he built up again the high places which Hezekiah, his father, had destroyed. That's right. Hezekiah is a godly king. What's a godly king? He's in heaven. But see, those 15 years that the Lord graciously gave him came in that same. That, like I said, that ought to tell you something about what those 15 years were actually like. Okay? And he reared up altar up altars for Baal and made a grove, as did Ahab, king of Israel, and worshipped all the host of heaven and served them. See, in verse 3 right there, Ahab is mentioned. Manasseh, and the Hebraic Jews will testify to this, Manasseh was worse than Ahab. Ahab was, uh, you know, led around by, by his little strings, by his wife Jezebel. You know, a picture of the Roman Catholic Church. But Manasseh was worse than Ahab. Ahab was a horrible king for Israel, or Judah, or whatever. But Manasseh was worse. Kamala was a horrible choice. They put Donald Trump in. And see, this woke mentality. Have you seen some of these freak out videos? They're disgusting. Um, I don't, I do believe some of them are staged. I do, but there are some out there of these uh, Trump being elected, a selected president thing with these people going crazy. Uh, some of them are legitimate. Okay, but here's the thing. Ahab is a bad king. Manasseh is worse. Blow that around in your brain case for a little while. And he built altars to the in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord said in Jerusalem, Well, I put my name. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he made his son pass through the fire and observe times and used enchantments and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. And he sent a graven image of the grove that he made in the house of which the Lord said to David and to Solomon his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name there forever. I will put my name forever, excuse me. Neither will I make the feet of Israel move any more out of the land which I gave their fathers, only if they will observe to do according to all that I have commanded them. See, that was conditional. Okay? That was a conditional part of it. The promise given unto Abraham, I'm going to give you that, okay, was unconditional. But Israel remaining 
in the land was conditional. Okay? And according to all the law that my servant Moses commanded them, but they hearkened not, and Manasseh seduced them to do more evil than did the nations whom the Lord destroyed before the children of Israel. Manasseh was one of the worst kings, if not the worst king of Israel in its history. Worse than Ahab. Again, Camilla was a horrible choice. They put Trump in office. They, the Jesuits. And you see how, how you know, his stands are sound good. But the condition populous with the option C. How many genders are there? The woke thing did exactly what it has done. What it was supposed to do. Second Chronicles 33. Second Chronicles 33. Now, here's the hope. Here's the hope. Second Chronicles 33. Because of what Manasseh did, the effects of his sin was so entrenched, so conditioned onto the people that judgment upon the people because of what he did was inevitable. But individually, Second Chronicles 33, 11 on to 13. Wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captain of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns and bound him with fetters and carried him to Babylon. And incidentally, this is before uh, the destruction of Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar. Okay? And when he was in affliction, who? Manasseh. He besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers and prayed unto him. And the prayer of Manasseh was written after the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? The prayer of Manasseh sounds good. That's, you can find that in the Apocrypha. It sounds good, but it's obviously written after the death, burial, and resurrection. It was not written B.C., like they want you to believe. Okay? Prayer of Manasseh found in the Apocrypha is not inspired scripture. Period. Even though it sounds good, it's not. Okay? And he prayed unto him, and he was entreated of him, and heard his supplication, and brought him again to Jerusalem and into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. The worst king in the history of Israel, I believe, obviously, is in heaven. See, that's the hope. But see, now go back to 2 Kings 24 now. 2 Kings chapter 24. Okay? 2 Kings chapter 24, verses 1 on to verse 4. And here is the picture. America, whatever nation you're under, cannot come back. But individually, today, that's the focus, the individual. The nation of America is not going to, come on, America is done for. It's the individuals within the nation that we, the saints, that's why we pray that, hey, Lord, can you keep this wicked government away from us that we may walk as in samples unto the lost according to your word as your ambassadors? 2 Kings 24, verses 1 and verse 4. In his days, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up, and Jehoiakim became his servant three years. Then he turned and rebelled against him, and the Lord sent against him bands of the Chaldees, and bands of the Syrians, and bands of the Moabites, and bands of the children of Ammon, and sent them against Judah to destroy it, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servants, the prophets. Surely, am I in the right place? Yes, I am. Surely, at the commandment of the Lord came this upon Judah. Why? To remove them out of his sight 
for the sins of Manasseh according to all that he did, and also for the innocent blood that he shed. For he filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, which the Lord would not pardon. the people, the consequences of Manasseh and his sin. And see, you read in 2nd and 2nd Kings um, 21 there, 2nd Kings 21, uh, where is that, or no, is that, uh, or is that in, uh, no, that's in 2nd Chronicles, 2nd Chronicles 33, let's go to 2nd Chronicles 33, okay? You read, if I can get there, verse 17 in 2 Chronicles 33, Nevertheless, the people did sacrifice still in high places, yet unto the Lord their God only. So they were going to uh, something that they shouldn't have, claiming to do it unto the Lord. I mean, you read 2 Kings 17. They worshiped the Lord, yet they sacrificed in, uh, on the high places, which was something that was not acceptable. So they were using the pagan practices to serve and worship the Lord. Ah! Uh -uh! See, the consequence that sin has, and when it is prolonged as it has been in America, cannot come back. God can save anybody. But see, that point of no return, we just read it. King Manasseh is in heaven. Yes, he is. Amen. But see, the consequences of what he did. Eternally forgiven. See, and that's another thing that the devils blur. Eternally, there are no consequences for my sin. There aren't. But the consequences that I have done, that I am receiving now, when I was a lost man, I'm receiving them what? Here. Okay? My bad health. Memories. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm eternally secure. Okay? I'm eternally secure. All right? The things that I did are not going to be held against me because the Lord Jesus Christ saved me. But the consequences of those sins now are things that you can reap. See, it's not, and it's not that you're paying for them for the eternal whatever. No, okay? I abused my body as a lost man, and I'm paying for those things today, okay? I touched things I should have never touched. My feet went to places they never should have gone to. I looked at things I should have never have looked at. I am forgiven of those. I am not going to be held to those things with the Lord. But the consequences of those, I feel here. Thus, Manasseh, one of the worst kings in the history of Israel, he's in heaven. But the consequences of all his prolonged, conditioned idolatry. God's judgment was inevitable. And that's what you people have to understand. Okay? And thus, you have a God who punishes people. Yes. And see, there again, you know, this fake God, God loves you. God's not mad at you. Uh, no, no. God does not love, present tense, the Christ rejecting sinner. We've already looked at it. Children of disobedience. You reject the true God who is, God's wrath is for you. Okay? All right? But in Leviticus chapter 26, 40 on to verse 42, Twenty-six. Twenty-six. Okay. Forty on to verse 42. And see, you know, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth. This is why the antinomianist hates this. 
They say calling on the name of the Lord is a work. No, it isn't. Okay? It's the lesser. See, when you broken of your self-righteousness, I put him on the cross. Oh, wow, I'm going to hell unless you save me. The, the heaven the hell scared out of you, running down your britches leg. You in that state, it's like, save me, Lord. What's happening? You're broken. The lesser is calling upon the greater. But see, when you circumvent that and say that's work, then you're the greater, aren't you? Yes, you are. That's how that works. That's their deception. Verse 40 under verse 42 in Leviticus 26. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, Lord, I'm, I, I can't do it. I, I, I'm, I'm evil. It's my, you died because of what I did. Oh, I'm going to hell unless you say, save me. Please, Lord Jesus Christ, save me. Only a self-righteous pig lost devil would say, that's heresy. That's a word. No. No. And that I also have walked contrary unto them and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled and they then accept the punishment of their iniquity. And what was that we read in Hosea? Huh? What was that we read in Hosea? Let me find that again. Okay. Hosea. Come on, fingers work with me. Where was that? Hosea, um, where it says, uh, where was that? Ah, yes. Come on. Hosea, what did, what did we read? <laughs> One second, I got to pause this. Isaiah 57. Okay, Isaiah 57, verse 10. Not Hosea, excuse me. Isaiah 57, verse 10. Thou art wearied in the greatness of thy way. Yet saidest thou not, there is no hope. Thou hast found the life of thine hand. Therefore thou wast not grieved. Brokenness. Brokenness. See, only a lost person will be the one who will reject and tell you that calling on the name of the Lord is a work. That being broken, contrite, and fearing the Lord... Uh, and stuff like calling on the name of the Lord. Only a lost person would say that. Okay? Look at this here again in Leviticus 26. Okay? That's brokenness. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespass against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them, and have brought them into the hand of their enemy, into the land of their enemies, if their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, and then and they then accept the punishment of their iniquity. And right here, dispensational difference. Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham. Abraham will I remember, and I will remember the land. Okay? But uncircumcised hearts be humbled. But what does antinomianism, what does Christianity offer you? Isaiah 57, 10. Thou art wearied in the greatness of thy way. Yet saidest thou not, there is no hope. Hopelessness. Christianity has a problem with hopelessness. Thou hast found the life of thy hand, thine hand. Therefore, thou wast not grieved. Okay? And Proverbs 28 again. People, only a lost person, someone who is not saved, someone who is not a saint, will say to you, calling on the name of the Lord is a work. Brokenness is not a requirement. Okay? Okay? Only lost people say that to you. 
Antinomianists are lost. Okay? Proverbs 28, 1 verse, verse 13. Proverbs 28, 13. He that covereth his sin shall prosper, shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Dispensational difference there, yes, but confessing. Lord, I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. I put you on the cross. Please save me, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, that's not a work. That's a requirement. That's the lesser calling on the greater. But when you say, no, that's, that's a work, that's heresy, you're making yourself the greater. Okay? You're making yourself the greater. Lamentations 3, 37 out of 30, uh, 45. Okay? And like we already talked about, okay, eternally, I'm not going to suffer the consequences of my sins. I abused my body for years, for years and years and years before the Lord saved me 16 years ago. Okay, I put things before my eyes I shouldn't have. And the memories that I have torment me today. They really do. They really do. See. The suffering of the consequences of you, what you did in your lost life. You can suffer today. Not eternally. But today. And when you know that and realize that. See. When I die I'm going to be with the Lord. But because I did still, I've said this to you, the drugs, the drinking, smoking marijuana through a bong, and then having a cigarette right afterwards. Why? Because that hides the smell, right? No, it kills you quickly. Just an example. Lord saves me. And I'm suffering for that now. Just like what you saw with Manasseh. Manasseh is in heaven. But what he did, the conditioning could not be avoided. The judgment for that could not be avoided. What I put my body through, where, where, what I saw, what my hands touched, where my feet led me, eternally, I'm not going to suffer that. Here. Lamentations 3, 37 out of 45. Who is he that saith, and it cometh to pass when the Lord commandeth it not? Out of the mouth of the Most High proceedeth not evil and good? Wherefore doth a living man complain, a man for the punishments, punishment of his sins? A living man. I did this to myself. I, <laughs> it wasn't the woman that thou gavest me to be with. I am the man. I can blame no one but me, and I blame no one but me. Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Let us lift up our heart with our hands unto God in the heavens. Brokenness. Acceptance of it. Okay? Which Christianity, especially these stupid antinomianists, deny. Okay? We have transgressed and have rebelled. Thou hast not pardoned. Thou hast covered with anger. And persecuted us. Thou hast slain. Thou hast not pitied. Thou hast covered thyself with a cloud. That our prayers should not pass through. Pray not for this people. Thou hast made us as the offscurring. And refuse. In the midst of the people. When you got lost people looking at like idiots like Tom and that whole group over there, praise that he isn't. Look at, them, look at them Christians. Or the occultic, uh, not the occultic, excuse me, the cultic mentality of some of these King James Bible believing Christians. It's like, yeah, look at that. <laughs> look at that. Shades of David Koresh. Personality cults. And see, again, calling out on the name of the Lord. Only a lost person would say that's a work. Only a lost person would try to deceive you 
and say, well, that's Paul talking on to uh, the Jews for the time of Jacob's trouble. I uh, prove that through scripture. You can't because it's not in there. Okay? Calling on the name of the Lord, that's in there. Okay? And they go like, well, that's in Joel. It's the calling on the name of the Lord crosses dispensational lines. Okay? We've talked about that. Uh, calling on the name of the Lord will be in the description box. Okay? All right? you have any questions about that? 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter 3, verses 10 on to 17. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Okay? Now, obviously this is not talking salvifically. No, because for he that will love life and see good days. Who's good but God, right? For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? And what is good? God. But, and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye. And be not afraid of their terror, nor, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And Jesus Christ is our hope. Our, and he dwells within us. See? That's why we don't fear the things of the world. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And see, people see that. This does not mean people have gone to this verse on numerous occasions trying to say, well, we have to answer all these people's questions. No, we don't. We give them a reason of the hope that is in us. And who's in us? The Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost. You know, the Lord is that spirit. And in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1, Jesus Christ is our hope. He dwells within us. You get it? Okay. Do you get it? You, you get it. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. Good conversation, which involves your words, but also your body language, how you behave. For it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. And I am suffering for the evil-doing I did while I was a lost man, even though I'm saved. But I also suffer for doing what the Lord has me to do. Oh, boy. Jude 14. Or Jude 14 on the 23. Jude 14 on the 23, and then we will be done. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Judgment is inevitable. Action and reaction. There are only two options. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts. And their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Hey, you get yourself into the good graces of the people by itching their ears, lifting them up in their sin, huh? Yeah. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you that there, told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. I want my cake and eat it too. Hey, I'll sin because I'm not under law. I'm under grace. I'm not even held to the morality of the law that it instills. No. And what? I'll sin because 
The more I sin, the more of God's grace I get. Only a stupid, deluded moron would fall for that. You want your sin. You want your sin. And antinomianism, Christianity, Rome will give it to you. These be they who separate themselves. Sensual, having not the spirit. Capital S, they're not saved. And that's another thing that these uh, free gracers people like to do. They gasp when someone says, according to scripture, they're not saved. And one of their own, that be their beloved stupid Jack Smack, does that all the time. But then again, he's the devil himself and preaches another gospel on another Jesus. He's an idiot. He is an absolute idiot. Okay? But they can how can you we don't know if anyone's truly saved or lost. Yes, we do. We can know how we have standard. Then we judge ourselves by first, and then you. And this mentality like you don't we don't know who it, if we can't know who is truly saved and who is truly lost, then, then what do we got this for? That, that, you know, and that's the underlying thing with these guys that stem from this easy believers, antinomianist, pond scum doctrine. Well, we, we can't really, who are you to say it? I, 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 <laughs> okay? Yeah, all right, I judge myself first by this standard. Yes, judge yourself first according to the standard. And see, in you doing that, you have the authority of Scripture because you start here, you can go there. You see how that works? And see, lost people have a problem with judgment. Lost people have a problem with judgment. Yeah, you heard me right. You got a problem with judgment, huh? I am saying and saying. Yes, I am. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And if some have compassion, making a difference, you know, a broken person, you know, like that Nick guy, and then you have this idiot coming around preaching uh, Renee Roland. But hopefully that one guy has enough brains. It's like, this is, yeah, okay? It's like why Paul didn't say, uh, mention anything to the Philippian jailer because he had godly... So Remember, you idiots. You antinomianist idiots. If the Philippian jailer had worldly sorrow, he would have succeeded. He had godly sorrow. Okay? <laughs> okay? Because they, 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 they like to point to the Philippian jailer. You know, Paul said, believe. He didn't mention anything about repentance. He had godly sorrow. He was about to uh, eviscerate himself. If he had worldly sorrow, he would have succeeded. Okay? Give me a break. All right? So, with some people that are in that case, we don't have to because they're already there. The Lord put us there that he may use us to, to glorify him. Okay? And others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Let's finish this up and then we'll be done. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. See, uh, saved people fall, lost fall away. <laughs> okay? All right? Now, unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Mm. Again, there are only two options, as there are only two genders, okay? There is no option C. There is no gray area. 
Okay? You're either or. And see, when you take it upon yourself in the eternal perspective to say, well, I don't like those options. If you choose not to decide, you have still made a choice. And in the eternal perspective, when you choose not to decide, John 8, 44, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Yeah, I have not said it. That is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching if you do. Uh, please continue to keep, uh, please continue to pray for the people that were um, uh, made homeless because of the fire at uh, um, oh, St. John's Apartments, okay? Please keep those people in your prayers that Lord's mercy and grace be there. Uh, please keep your servant in prayer, okay? All right, like I told you quite often, uh, it's, it is getting worse. Um, and do keep each other in prayer. Thank you for watching this if you do. Um, I love you. I'm going to get this uploaded. It's uh, 2.30, so this will be uploaded by 5 or something like that. So anyway, thank you for your patience, brethren. Like I said, this yesterday was bad. Yesterday was bad. Yesterday was bad. Not the worst, but it was bad. So I love you, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.